Hello and welcome. In today's tutorial, you'll learn how to integrate Reillusion characters into Unreal's official game animation sample project. GASP for short is a motion matching system that delivers smooth and responsive gameplay. While both GASP and ALS are popular control systems in Unreal, today we'll be focusing on GASP and cover ALS in another tutorial. For your reference, here are the key differences between these two game control systems. In CC5 or CC4.6, start with your game character loaded in the scene. Open the Export FBX menu and set the target tool preset to the newly supported Unreal UE 5 skeleton, then expand the advanced settings. With this preset, the Epic skeleton will automatically be set to UE 5 skeleton, which matches the skeleton used by the UEFN character in GASP. Next, go to the Add Reference Pose section and switch the option to A Pose for UEFN. This ensures the character's bind pose is fully compatible with GASP. For more retargeting information, please check out the other tutorial for retargeting settings for Unreal Engine. Finally, change the FBX Export option to Mesh. Enable Delete Hidden Faces, and then export your character. Go to the fab and search for the Game Animation Sample Project. Add it to your Epic Games Launcher, then create a new project and select your desired UE version here. We'll use Unreal Engine 5.6. Finally, make sure to install Unreal Auto Setup so the project can properly integrate your character. Open the project and press play to enter game mode. You'll see that the default character is the UEFN mannequin. Feel free to explore around with this character. Within the project, you'll also find a game animation widget. Stepping onto it will bring up a pop-up menu where you can switch between different characters. However, these characters are pre-configured by the sample project itself. So how do we bring in our CC characters and make them playable in this setup? Now, let's start by creating a folder and importing our character. Select HQ Shader, and be sure to disable Use T0 as Ref Pose as well as Import Morph Target if you don't need facial expressions. Doing so can save a significant amount of time during import. After importing your character, you'll see that both the IK Rig and IK Retargeter are automatically configured and ready for use in retargeting animations from the UEFN character. Open the IK Retargeter, and you'll notice that the source and target are initially set to your character's IK Rig by default. To retarget animations, simply change the source to the UEFN mannequin, whose IK rig is already pre-configured in this project. Finally, adjust the target offset to get a clearer view during the process. Now, let's first verify compatibility. You'll notice that they all share the same bind pose thanks to selecting the A pose for UEFN option in CC. You can also toggle skeleton visibility to confirm that the main bones are resembled. This is because they all use the UE5 skeleton, which features five spine bones and four palm bones on each hand. In the Asset Browser window, you'll find animations from the UEFN mannequin, all designed for motion matching and GASP. Simply click on any of them to preview the retargeting results, and everything should be in order. Once satisfied, save the IK retargeter. Next, we need to set up a few blueprints. Start by copying the name of your character's IK retargeter, as we'll use it shortly. Then, navigate to the Blueprint folder and open the Retargeted Characters subfolder. Let's break the process into three steps. Step 1. Configure the animation source. We need to change the motion matching source to the IK retargeting result we previously created. Open the animation blueprint and look at the right panel, you'll see the IK Retargeter map, which lists retargeters for characters that can be switched in the game mode. Add your IK Retargeter to this map 
and assign it a name for later reference. Compile the blueprint to confirm the changes. Now, the retargeted animation results are successfully integrated into the animation blueprint. Step 2. Replace the mesh with your character. Start by duplicating one of the existing character blueprints and renaming it. Open the blueprint and switch to the Viewport tab. You'll see that the mesh still belongs to the original character. Select the Skeletal Mesh component and assign your own character mesh instead. At this point, the mesh updates correctly, but the animation may look off. This happens because the blueprint is still using the original retargeting data. In the Details panel, search for Tag to locate the Component Tag field. This is where the blueprint stores the retargeting reference. Change this tag to the IK retargeter you configured earlier in the animation blueprint. Now, the animation aligns properly with your character. Compile the blueprint to save your changes. Both the retargeted animations and the new mesh are now fully set up. Step 3. Add your character to the selection menu. To make your character selectable at runtime, Navigate to the Widget folder and open the Game Animation widget. This widget stores the list of available characters. Duplicate one of the existing entries and change its Character Blueprint reference to your new character. Finally, compile the blueprint and your character is now available in the Selection menu, ready to use in-game. Once you've completed these three steps, Play and re-enter game mode. Now, when you step on the game animation widget, you can select your character, and the results look fantastic. Watch how smoothly he moves, runs, and climbs, perfectly matching the retargeted animations. This workflow is also fully compatible with actor core characters, allowing you to bring any actor core asset into the scene with the same smooth results. That wraps up today's tutorial. Be sure to check out our next guide on setting up the ALS game control system. See you next time.